Okay, so example three, model with exponential functions. The population of a large city was about 4.6 million in the year 2010 and grew at a rate of 1.3% for the next four years. A, what exponential function models the population of the city over that four year period? So first, we want to be able to model the situation using exponential function. We know this is exponential because it has a growth rate, right, um, for the next four years. And so every year it grows 1.3% for the next four years. And um, at 2010, it's 4.6 million. So starting there, it's going to grow 1.3% every year. So using that, we know that the rate R is 0 0.013, and the initial value is 4.6 million. And so using that, we can, um, we can use the exponential function equation, where we start with 4.6, and then our growth rate is going to be multiplied by 1.013. If we multiply the, the initial value by 0 0.013, then then it's just the, the population that, that's new, right? That's grown. So we have to multiply the original one plus 0 0.013 to the power of t because that's the number of years. Every year we grow with the same rate. So this would be a function, exponential function that will model this. Um, if the population... Yeah, if the population continues to grow at the same rate, what would be the population in 2040? So since 2010, how many years have passed in 2040? 30 years. So t is 30, and then you just have to plug it in to t and, and use, it, use the calculator to figure it out. And you can round it up to however they want us to round it up, depending on the situation, usually by hundreds um, for dollars. And population, you can also use hundreds too, because this is in, t in millions, the population in millions. So it's going to be about 6.78 million if it continues to grow at this rate. So first of all, your step, your first step, set up an exponential function. Next step, you can figure out, um, you can predict the, the future population if it continues to grow at the same rate. So let's look at try number three. A factory purchased a 3D printer in 2010. The value of the printer is modeled by the function f of x equals 30 times 0 0.93 to the power of x, where x is the number of years since 2010. Um, so part one, part A, what is the value of the printer after 10 years? B, does the printer lose more of its value in the first 10 years or in the second 10 years after it was purchased? So first step always to set up an equation and then you can use the function to answer these questions. Pause the video and come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, so the value of the printer after 10 years, first, you have to set up the function. Let's check your answer. So, yeah, well, you, you don't have to really set it up because there is a function given. So the we know the initial value is 30, and then um, it decreases at a rate of uh, 7%, and so 0 0.93 is multiplied every time. Yeah, so the value will decrease, right? So the value of the printer after 10 years would be um, f of 10, would be figured out by f of 10, is equal to 30 times 0 0.93 to the power of 10, which is about 14.1, wait, 14.5194692 and then yeah and you can say it's about 14.52 dollars rounded to the hundreds place does the printer lose more of its value in the first 10 years or in the second 10 years after it was purchased so first of all we want to figure out the average rate of change 
um, for the first 10 years and then the second 10 years. So uh, figure out your points. 0, 30, we started with 0, 30. And after 10 years, it's going to be about 14.52. And after 20 years, it's going to be about 7.027. And then your slope for this one, average rate of change for the first 10 years, so M1, M sub 1 is going to be negative 1.55 per year. If you use the slope equation, 14.52 minus 30 all over 10 minus 0. And then the second year, M sub 2, the second 10 years would be 7.027 minus 14.52 over 20 minus 10. And that's going to be about negative 0 0.75 per year. So um, in this case, we know that uh, the average rate of change um, decreases more in the first 10 years because, because we have a less, uh, one, negative 1 1.55 is less than negative 0 0.75. So it loses more of its value in the first 10 years would be our final answer. All right, that was example three and try number three. Let's look at example four. And before we do that, um, the concept of exponential growth and decay is from the exponential function model. So exponential growth model grows. Obviously, it increases as x increases. And exponential decay model um, decays. So it decreases as x increases. So the growth or decay factor is equal to b. And r is the growth rate or the decay decay rate. So please be careful of the wordings here. Growth rate, R. And then, and then this one, this R is the decay rate. But then the whole 1 plus R and 1 minus R is a growth factor or the decay factor. Yeah. So let's look at example four. Interpret an exponential function. A car was purchased for $24,000. The function y equals 24 times 0 0.8 to the power of x can be used to model the value of the car in thousands of dollars x years after it was purchased. So does the function represent exponential growth or decay? 24 times 0 0.8. You're multiplying 0 0.8 every time. That means you're losing 20% every time. So it's an exponential decay function. What's the rate of the decay? So the rate, it's not the decay factor, it's the rate, you're finding the r. What does it mean? So 1 minus r is equal to 1.8, which means 1 minus 0 0.2 um, is 0 0.8, and so r is 0 0.2, which means 20%. So the value of the car decreases by 20% every year. Uh, and then we can graph the function on a reasonable domain, which means negative uh, values for x would not be reasonable because we don't have a negative um, year in this case. So we're only drawing on quadrant one. What do the y-intercept and asymptote represent? So the y-intercept here represents the value of the car um, at $24,000 when we started, when we bought it. And then the asymptote, y equals zero, means it's, it will approach zero eventually after many years, um, but it's, it's not going to ever reach zero. So the find, so, so it's going to decrease and decrease and decrease. Find the value of x when y is equal to 5. Um, so when y is equal to 5, it's about 7.02, 1 to 766. And you can use the graphing calculator in, in this case um, if you want to graph it to figure it out. But even if you don't have graphing calculator, you can plug it into your function and um, figure out the approximate point. So it's going to be about 7,5. This means the value of the car will be about 5,000 after seven years. 
All right, so let's look at try number four. 220 hawks were released into a region on January 2nd, 2016. The function f of x equals 220 times 1.05 to the power of x could be used to model the number of hawks in the region x years after 2016. So let's, um, let's look at this function and answer these questions. Is the population increasing or decreasing? Explain in what year will the number of hawks reach 280? Pause the video, come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, so the function is already given. Looking at that, we know that it started with 220, which is initial value. And then 1.05 is the growth factor. Uh, it's the growth factor that gives us the rate of 5%, right? One is 100%. And so um, your rate is going to be 0.05 or 5%. So is the population increasing or decreasing? It's increasing because your your growth factor is is uh, your base is greater than one, right? And then, in order to figure out the number of hugs, we have to plug it in. But let's first explain part A. It is increasing because the base is greater than one, so the function is a growth function, and it increases as x increases. So in what year will the number of hawks reach 280? So in order to figure this out, you need to determine if the information they they gave is x or f of x. Number of hugs would be representing the f of x, the function, right? So 280 is equal to 220 times 1.05 to the power of x. And we need to find x where it's the closest to 280. In order to do that, we do have to plug it, plug in numbers one by one. And so let's simplify our equation. Um, we're going to divide 280 by 220 and get 14 over 11, which is, which is about 1.272727. Yeah, and so we're going to plug in some points and see if it's getting closer to 1.27. So if x is 1, 1.05 to the power of 1 is just 1.05, right? If x is 2, 1.05 squared would be 1.1025. If it's x is 3, 1.1576. If x is 4, it's 1.2155. It's getting closer and closer. If x is 5, it's 1.276. That's pretty close. If x is 6, it's 1.34, and, and it, gets, it's, it gets bigger. So 5 would be very close to 1.2727, but it's not exactly. Um, it's, it's a little bit smaller, right? Um, oh, it's a little bit bigger, right? Because that should be 2 instead of 6. So 2727. 1.276 is a little bit greater than 1.27 repeated. So we, what does this mean? So did it pass 5 years already? No, after five years, it's a little bit bigger than 1.27. So the number of hawks will reach 280 near the end of 2020, where so near the end of the fourth year, right? And so that's going to be what this means. Almost year five, but not quite. So after four years, definitely, but when it's almost after five years, it, it's not going to be after five years, but when it's almost. So it's almost at the end of uh, the fourth year, right? So after, um, since 2016, um, yeah, four years would be 2020. So at the end of 2020, uh, the number of hawks will reach 280. So 
So let's write that down. The number of hogs will reach 280 near the end of 2020. There we go. Okay, let's look at example five. This is the last example for this lesson. Compare two exponential functions. A museum purchased a painting and a sculpture in the same year. Their changing values are modeled as shown. Find the average rate of change of the value of each artwork over the five-year period. Which artwork's value is increasing more quickly? So the sculpture's value is increasing um, like this, and the painting value is increasing like this. Sculpture started with 50 thousand dollars and then it increases by 7.5 percent each year right and then painting started with 40 and then we don't know the base yet but we can figure it out using these points so we already have the equation for sculpture value so we know that it's going to increase by 7.5 percent each year but painting we can um yeah we can figure out base using the exponential function formula where f of x is equal to a b to the power of x and then you can plug this in you know a is 40 so 40 so because when x is zero base is just this b to the power of x is one so that has to be 40 so a is 40 but look and using the other point 64.4 has to be 40 times uh, base to the power of 5. And so using that, we can, yeah, we can figure out um, 64.4 over 40, fifth root of that would be base, right? Yeah. So then using the calculator, you can figure out the base. But looking at the average rate of change, you could also answer this question. But if we want to use this in the future, where, where we want to we wanna answer more questions related to this problem, we would like to figure the base out, right? So the base is going to be about 1.099930324. And so the equation gives you that the painting is going to increase as a, a, at a rate of 9.99% every year, which is greater than sculpture. Yeah. So just by looking at um, the five-year period, we need to figure out the points for 0 and 5, right? Uh, when x is 0 and 5. So you can use the slope equation to uh, to figure out the average rate of change over the five-year period. And then during the five-year period, we already see that the painting value uh, increases a, a little bit more than the sculpture value over the first five-year period, right? So let's look at try number five. Example five, will the value of the painting ever surpass the value of the sculpture according to the models explained? So the painting started with a lower value, but it does increase at a, at a greater rate, right? So it increases a lot faster than sculpture does. So we know it has to surpass the value of the sculpture at some point. So yes. Yeah, and we don't have to figure out exactly when because that's not our question. We have to answer what they asked us, right? So the function for sculpture is 50. It started with 50 times 1.075 to the power of x. And then we could write the function of painting as g of x, which is 40 times 1.0999. To the power of x, which obviously has a grow, uh, has a bigger, bigger rate, right? So yes, yes, the value of the painting is increasing at a greater average rate than the value of the sculpture. So the painting will eventually be more valuable.
All right, so that was example five and try number five. Let's summarize our lesson. Key features of exponential functions. We looked at the growth factor, the decay factor, the exponential growth and decay function models. Um, and uh, we've learned that the key features are basically the same if we do not move um, the graph vertically, right? Um, yeah, and the end behavior will have uh, will have one arrow approaching to zero or your asymptote. Um, so yeah, please review the the key features or any other concepts that you're not sure of. That was lesson six slash one, key features of exponential functions. We'll continue with the next lesson in the next video. Bye.